Well, despite some waffling in the equity markets, we are seeing crypto prices advance. Ethereum is up. Bitcoin is also moving up. In about two weeks' time, there's a pretty significant event that's happening in crypto. You might have heard of it, the halvening. What is it? First of all, we know that when you get Bitcoin, um, one way is to buy it on exchange now. Another way is to mine it. And when you mine it successfully, say you get a Bitcoin reward of 10 Bitcoin. The halving means that that reward is going to be cut in half, hence the halving or the halving. And those in crypto view this as bullish because it is reducing the amount of new supply. And keep in mind, the Bitcoin white paper says we're only ever going to get 21 million of these coins. Now, some people have not taken the time to actually read that white paper. They just know that they are playing Bitcoin. There's a number of ways to do that. There's Bitcoin itself. There's other cryptocurrencies. And then increasingly, there are a large number of Bitcoin exposed Equities. Let's bring in Mark Palmer. He's fintech and digital analyst, asset, uh, digital assets analyst at uh, Benchmark. Thanks so much for joining us, Mark. And you just put a street high target on MicroStrategy, which has become another de facto play on uh, crypto. Did I explain that happening and why it's bullish uh, properly? No, I, I definitely think that you did. I think one thing that I would add is uh, just to look at history and what the impact of the having has been. Uh, the first three halvings, because there have been three in 2012, 2016, and then again in 2020. And each time we saw a significant rally in the price of Bitcoin during the 18 months or so after it occurred, uh, which you know was due to the supply shock uh, that you described uh, primarily. Um, this go around, I think we, we have a, a bit of a different dynamic because there's also a demand shock. And that's the result of the introduction of spot Bitcoin ETFs after their approval in the U.S. in January by the SEC. So then my question is, for you who covers a stock like MicroStrategy and other um, digital asset companies, why continue to own them when I could just own the currency in an ETF? Like, what's the incremental added value I'm getting? One of the biggest differences between uh, owning MicroStrategy and owning a spot Bitcoin ETF is the fact that MicroStrategy is a corporation. It actually uh, was founded as a software company 30 years ago, continues to uh, develop and sell business intelligence software. Uh, and so this gives the company the ability to do a couple of things that an ETF just can't. One is to use the free cash flow generated from that software business and use it to buy Bitcoin. Uh, the other, which has been much more impactful, is the ability to tap the capital markets, uh, which the company has done a number of times. Um, most recently in March, it issued two convertible bonds uh, with uh, interest rates coupons less than 1%. So it's able to borrow cheaply from the capital markets and then turn around and use the proceeds to buy more Bitcoin. Uh, this is a, a completely unique uh, approach that the company is taking. And importantly, if you look at the performance of MicroStrategy shares since it began its Bitcoin acquisition strategy back in August of 2020, it has significantly outperformed the price of Bitcoin, the return on Bitcoin. It's also outperformed uh, the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, gold, silver, uh, all the major tech companies. So uh, it's been an outstanding performer. It hasn't been a straight line. We did see a, uh, a significant downturn in 2022. Uh, but over the period of time since 2020, MicroStrategy has been an enormous outperformer. Your price target at 1875, as I mentioned, is street high. But it implies like 20% upside from here, which on a stock that's already up 145% so far this year, that's like a mundane amount. You know, how did you get there? And is there risk that, mm -hmm. you know, if, you know, I assume it's on a Bitcoin price assumption, like if there's a surprise in the Bitcoin price, could that could that go even higher? No, that's correct. You know, my, my price target is based on some of the parts analysis, uh, which combines uh, our projected Bitcoin holdings at the end of 2025 and our projected price of Bitcoin at the end of 2025 uh, combined with uh, the valuation that we're assigning to the company's software business. So uh, what we have done is uh, project uh, that the price of Bitcoin will reach 150,000 
dollar, U.S. dollars uh, at the end of 2025. Uh, we have also assumed that the company will continue to do what it has done for the last 15 consecutive quarters, which is to continue to buy Bitcoin and add it uh, to its holdings, um, primarily by, uh, again, using the free cash flow that is generated by the software business and continuing to tap the capital markets so that it can buy more Bitcoin. Um, so we are assuming that you're going to see uh, increases on both sides. Um, and this is part of the reason why we think some of the criticisms we've heard about how uh, MicroStrategy is trading at a uh, significant premium to its current net asset value um, are not necessarily um, on target uh, simply because we're looking at things not as in a static manner in terms of where NAV is now, net asset value is currently, but where it's going to be in a couple of years, which is, is how equities are analyzed. It's forward looking. Um, you, you cover a bunch of digital asset companies, as I mentioned. Um, others that haven't fared as well as MicroStrategy, but that you do have a buy on. DeFi Technologies, which is Canadian, and while it's run up um, you know, over the last year, let's call it a well off of its 2021 peak. Uh, BitDeer is another one that it doesn't seem to have kept pace with some of the other moves we've seen. Um, talk to me about how you're screening these other plays and what gets you excited about them. Yeah, um, well, with regard to DeFi Technologies, this is a, a unique asset manager uh, that um, is, it is uh, a provider of exchange-traded products, uh, which is uh, ETFs, uh, exchange-traded funds, or a subset of, e of exchange-traded products that are sold uh, throughout Europe. And the, uh, the difference between what DeFi Technologies does and some of its peers is that it is able to stake its uh, assets under management. Staking is uh, the process in uh, blockchain uh, where investors can uh, earn yield on their holdings uh, by committing them to a blockchain protocol. Uh, and so this is something that is not allowed to happen in the United States, it is permitted in Canada. And so DeFi is effectively taking advantage of that arbitrage. Um, you know, This is a company that has seen its assets under management um, skyrocket over the last number of months. Um, it is really uh, not so much a play on Bitcoin, but more a play on altcoins, the uh, the mm. crypto tokens other than Bitcoin. Um, and uh, I, we be, have just begun to see uh, interest in that begin to pick up. Um, BitDeer is a Bitcoin miner. Uh, and um, one of the things that makes it different from its peers, or, or many of its peers at least, is the fact that uh, it has a diversified strategy. It's not simply mining Bitcoin and holding it on its balance sheet. It's also using its uh, hash rate or uh, the computational power uh, associated with mining Bitcoin and uh, funneling that into uh, uh, artificial intelligence and high performance computing uses in Southeast Asia. So um, the um, key right now for the Bitcoin miners is to put themselves in a better position on the other side of the halving. Uh, because of course, uh, at the time of the halving, the, the rewards the miners are gonna be receiving are gonna be cut in half. So it's crucially important for these businesses to get their expense bases in order and to continue to grow uh, both their electric capacity and their hash rate uh, so that they can uh, not only um, create more Bitcoin, but do so in the most cost efficient manner possible so that they're competitive.